just a bit of a short comparison video between these three different uh, Ryobi 18 volt uh, one plus inverters because each one has kind of its merits and its weak spots uh, first off this it's cheap 50 bucks uh, main problem with this is this uh, battery adapter that it comes with is not actively retained on the battery so it likes to pop off fairly easily especially if it's being moved around uh, however this one it'll also run off at 12 volts because one of the things it comes with is a 12 volt cigarette lighter connector with the with the same or 12 volt cigarette lighter cable with the same uh, fairly large I think that might be an 8 millimeter uh, barrel jack on it something like that and because it's uh, all just one potential converter inside the thing, this will run not just on 12 volts, but also on 14 volts and 16 volts nominal if you have race cars that use either of those two systems. Uh, next is this one. This is more expensive. This is, I think, in the neighborhood of 60 to $80, depending on where you get it, at least as I'm filming this in you know, early January 2022. However, this one, for portable applications, the battery physically clips into the bottom of the inverter and it's all one unitized, you know, reasonably durable for what it is thing. So especially if you're using this to uh, say small, just pure resistive untemperature controlled soldering irons, which I've done with this thing, work lights, which I do with this on a somewhat regular basis, is actually when I, I use it the most for that and uh, testing lamps and uh, lighting stuff, Christmas lights, etc. out in the field, very good for that purpose. Uh, then there's this inverter, which is a hybrid like this one. Uh, however, this one, while it is 12 volt and 18 volt, you can't use the full 800 watt, uh, cheaper it's really 800 VA, uh, setting a chooch on 18 volts. Because people have, tr have uh, tried fabric cobbling adapters with multiples of these batteries that hook up to the back. It doesn't work. Reason for that is because this actually uses two different potential converters. There's one 800 watt one for the full chooch that comes off of these two, or that's connected to these two binding posts. Then there's a separate smaller one which runs off of the connector for the 18 volt battery. And I think based on my looking at the guts of this thing, because I've got a guts video of this inverter. Uh, a 12 volt connector which is under where this battery mounts or in the pocket where this battery mounts uh, that goes to its own cigarette lighter uh, cable so yeah the reason for that is just because the smaller potential converter it's much easier to design it to operate over a wider range of input potentials than the bigger um, one that has to deal with the full 800 watts of chooch then um, of course, all of these have USB-A, although one issue with this, the USB-A charging, uh, because of the value of, at least what I think it is, is the value of the resistor that's used on the two uh, uh, data lines, uh, anything reasonably intelligent that you plug into this thinks it can only draw anywhere from about 200 to 500 milliampers, uh, at least in my testing. So a lot of stuff doesn't really like to charge off of this although the uh, buck converter inside it is capable of it because I've run some uh, small loads um, some USB uh, LED basically they're sold as camping lights for use with other things like this or you know, power banks and they'll run off of it just fine and those things are 700 million years ish each um, and we'll run two of those just fine which is you know one one and a half ampere load also another thing with these two, they have work lights. Uh, may not be the most useful thing unless you need them, in which case they're extremely useful. This one does not, but again, 50 bucks. This is, I think, 80 when I got it, but I got it right when it came out because I needed it for an emergency project at the time. And this one I got just to have as an emergency backup thing because of the way the world's headed. The only issue with the emergency light on this one, it... Uh, where it's positioned on the thing, it can blind you, especially if you're using a darker one. Well, not you know blind as you're never going to see again, but it, you will be kind of seeing stars, especially when you need to read this screen, because this one does have a built-in power meter. 
However, the power meter on this is the total aggregate demand from all of the outputs. The 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter thing, which from my analysis of the circuitry inside it is only good for anywhere from about like 3 to 5 amperes. Um, but again, for small stuff up to, you know, a couple amperes, it'll run just fine, like small 12 volt lights or something or other. Not going to be an issue. A uh, 55 watt plug-in spotlight could be an issue. One of the really old ones that uses 150 watt um, plain landing light lamp, one of the big PR46 jobbies. You ain't going to be running it off of that thing when the uh, the uh, inductor for it is could fit on your thumbnail. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Uh, it does have a USB-C. I'll put in addition to the usb a port so the USB A is 5 volt only. It's 5 volt only on all of these. Uh, this one is 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, 15 volts, and 20 volts. So up to uh, 20 watts, if I recall correctly. Also, one other last thing about this is that at very low loads, like for example this uh, 7.5 G11 uh, nightlight lamp, the control loop is a little bit unstable and it will flicker, uh, both when turned on and anywhere from about every 10 seconds to about every 30 to 45 seconds. I haven't specifically timed it because it's somewhat random. Uh, any loads above seven and a half watts, you know, this lamp, it'll run, not a problem. And of course, uh, yeah, I've already mentioned the aggregate demand. And uh, so yeah, they're all, again, they each have their use cases where, you know, they make sense. Uh, this one, of course, is the most expensive, but it's also the most capable, at least when run off of uh, the main 12-volt thing. And were you to use it on a somewhat regular basis with the big 12-volt thing, I would not recommend using the supplied clamps that it comes with because those are kind of flimsy. What I would recommend is cobbling up something with, say, like an Anderson D-connector, um... You know, higher current power poles or something or other, making up a wiring harness that you know one is an adapter assembly that goes on to this inverter, one of which hooks up to the 12 volt system that this is going to be running off of. So that way you don't inadvertently hook it up backwards. You don't have to fiddle around with the uh, with the uh, thumb screws every time you have, you know connect it and disconnect it. And it's also the kind of thing where to hook it up backwards would require either rewiring something or physically destroying the connector. Because while this does have overcurrent protection, which, again, there's going to be some level of reverse polarity thing. It's going to involve blowing fuses and other things could possibly get killed in the resulting transit that popped the fuse in the first place. So, yeah, it's, uh, again, uh, depending on your use case, these will all uh, they'll work for what they work for.